Hey Pokemon fans, I'm Jay Wentz, and welcome to today's new Top 10 video. The Pokeball is such an interesting object within the Pokemon universe. It can take a giant creature, size them down to a tiny little sphere, and you can fit them in your pocket wherever you go. There are 26 different types of Pokeballs, and originally I was going to do a Top 10 video on my 10 favorite Pokeballs. But the more I looked at them, the more I thought, I actually hate most of these balls. So, we're flipping the switch. My top 10 least favorite Pokeballs, starting now. Number 10. Pokeball. This is a weird choice for me. By straight stance, the Pokeball is the worst. No modifiers, no bonuses, no anything. The catch rate for all other Pokeballs is stacked up to the rate of a normal ball, with a plain Pokeball being set at just one times. But can you really knock the ball when it's designed to get you into the game, is the cheapest ball by far, and has by far the most iconic design? Nah, I can't be too harsh on the guy. Number 9. Lure Ball. You have to feel bad for Kurt. He makes some of the best designed balls in the games, and his invention of new balls in the second generation was a much awaited change. But let me let you in on a little secret. Kurt's balls suck. The lure ball is actually one of his better balls, with a three times catch rate when catching Pokemon while fishing. But that starts to become way less cool when you realize how many other balls do his job better. The net ball has a three times catch rate with all water Pokemon and bug types as well, and the dive ball past Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald has a 3.5 times catch rate when fishing or surfing. The fact that more than 10% of the available ball designs today are centered on catching water Pokemon is weird to me, but when you're the worst of that group, you're just a fish out of water. Every pun I write. It hurts. It hurts! Number 8. Love Ball. This ball is great because the programmers messed it up entirely in gold and silver. The description? For catching the opposite gender. Which is why one must question why the ball has an 8 times modifier when catching Pokemon of the same species and gender in gold, silver, and crystal. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but how do you mess up the one intended ball mechanic completely? It's fixed to help catch Pokemon of the opposite gender in future games, but still, who wants to re-catch Pokemon they've already caught in the first place? Number 7. Nest Ball. This ball helps you catch lower level Pokemon. With the attractive formula, your multiplier equals 40 minus your Pokemon's level divided by 10 with a minimum of 1 times. Because often, I think to myself, Man, I am really having trouble catching these low-level Pokémon. Once the Pokémon you're trying to catch hit level 15 and beyond, you're better off just using a standard Ultra Ball, and it only gets worse from there. Number 6. Repeat Ball. Remember when I said, who likes catching Pokémon you've already got before? The Repeat Ball is there to give you a second option for these tiring catches. Three times multiplier trying to catch Pokémon that you've already caught in the Pokédex before. Now I know, Every Pokemon is different and special and blah, 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 blah. Sorry, dude, but I just want to catch them all. If I want repeats, I'll breed. Number five. Heal Ball. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Heal Ball is a one times catch rate like a Pokeball, but it, get this, heals Pokemon that you've caught. Now, from a Pokemon rights perspective, I get it. You have to lower a Pokemon's HP to make them more catchable, so it'd be nice to bring that HP back, be a little bit nicer to the guys. But once you get your team of six, where do your Pokeballs go? Okay. And what is right next to where your Pokeballs go? And why should I ever buy a Heal Ball? Number four. Premier Ball. Remember how I said Pokeball was off the hook? Premier Ball is not. It's a simple one times modifier, nothing special. Premier Ball is just a little bonus gift, given to you every time you buy at least ten balls at a time. This gets exciting early in because it's like an extra Pokeball. But as soon as you outgrow those, getting better balls, the Premier Ball stops feeling like much of a prize. 10 Great Ball? Have a Premier Ball. 10 Ultra Ball? Have a Premier Ball! You get a Premier Ball! You get a Premier Ball! EVERYBODY GETS A PREMIER BALL! I shouldn't complain about a free gift, but come on. Just give me a free ball the set I purchased. Then I'd actually use it. Number 3. Moon Ball. Kurt's work at its finest. The Moon Ball is good at catching Pokemon that evolve with a Moonstone? This leaves you with the awesome selection of Nidoran, Jigglypuff, Clefairy, and Skitty families. And nothing else. Today it's a four times modifier on that extremely small capture selection, but in the second generation, they've done it again and glitched the ball entirely. 
This time, because of the glitch, the catch rate is always one, no matter what. It's a Pokeball in disguise. And it wasn't even good in the first place. Number two. Safari Ball. Come on, come on. Oh! This would be so much easier if I could just battle these Pokemon. Why Safari Zone? Why have you condemned me to this Pokemon prison? Why do you despise the art of the capture? I can't. I can't! I can't! Number one! GS Ball. Finally, I can talk about this thing. You guys have been requesting a video on this sucker for years. It's not a topic big enough for its own video, so I've been putting it off, but here it is. The GS Ball. In Japan, this promotional item was used to help you obtain Celebi in the second generation. Even hacking the GS Ball into the English game, though, the ball is completely useless and won't do anything. Completely useless, won't do anything... Why does that sound so familiar? Oh yeah! There was a GS Ball in the anime too, wasn't there? Let me explain to you where this ball goes. It starts with Professor Ivy, who can't open the thing to save her life. Oak and Ash try and help, and they can't do anything either. Oak tells Ash to bring it with him and see if he can open it on his journey. Ash gets the ball, ignores it for a while, and can't figure anything out. A few episodes later, Ash gives it back to Oak. Then Team Rocket steals it briefly, but our heroes get it back. Oak and Tracy now have the ball, and guess what? Can't do anything with it. So they give it back to Ash, tell him to deliver it to someone else. Then Quagsire steals the ball in an episode, Ash gets it back, and finally delivers it to our final holder. And that's it. This ball shifted hands over and over in nearly a dozen episodes, and it never did anything. Why? According to an interview with Matsumitsu Hidaka, the GS ball was originally going to open a story arc about Celebi. But once they decided Celebi was going to be in the fourth movie, they shelved the entire multi-episode GS Ball arc and just hoped everyone would forget about it. We didn't. And that always bothered me. Why couldn't they just tie the GS Ball into the movie? It's not like the show and the movies hadn't been connected before. Just look at Mewtwo. Either way, the GS Ball is now left forever with... Who? Just who is our mystery handler? None other than the Pokeball Demon himself. Kurt. It's thanks to Kurt that we can't have nice balls. He tarnishes them with enticingly cool colors, but terrible effects, and now he holds the GS ball to himself for eternity. Kurt, where Pokeballs go to die! A lot of Pokeballs might be stupid, but they don't have to be. I was really disappointed in the fifth generation when Game Freak decided to only add one ball, the Dream Ball, into the games, and I think that there's a lot of room for a lot of great Pokeballs that could do all kinds of unique things. Let me know in the comments section below what kind of ball would make the games a better place for X and Y. If you like this video and want to see new videos about all things Pokemon as soon as they come out, click the subscribe button below me to subscribe to my channel and see everything as soon as it's up. Yeah. I'd say do it. We fly so high, you know who it's balling. Do 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 do. This ball's actually really dirty. There's tape on it for some reason. I don't know why I did that. It used to have that Burger King card in it that everybody thinks is valuable, but it's not. It isn't worth anything. It's just gold plated. It's not solid gold. Keep it as a happy reminder of when Pokemon was super popular. But you can't sell it for much. I got Jigglypuff and Charizard. And I didn't care about the other ones. I think there were six. Maybe a Mewtwo. Why does Poliwag sound right? I could be making that one up. Pikachu was probably one. And I don't know what the sixth is. So I'm going to leave.